Hi, I'm Aliyah Middleman, and I'll be doing the review on Lecture 13, which is Lewis Structures, that covers um, chapter and section 4.4 through 4.6. As just a little introduction, we're going to talk a little bit about Gilbert and Lewis. Gilbert and Lewis is an American chemist who lived from 1875 to 1946. Um, but while he was studying in 1916, he proposed two different ideas. Um, so he said that atoms form chemical bonds through sharing electrons. In other words, um, he's just talking about covalent bonds. Um, and then he also proposed that each atom requires enough electrons to mimic a noble gas. Noble gases are very stable atoms in general, just in their regular form. And so that would make sense that um, all the other atoms would want to mimic them in the fact of their stability um, to minimize their internal energy. And so that follows what we call the octet rule. Um, and so that means that all atoms tend to lose, gain, or share electrons so that each atom has eight valence electrons. In other words, an octet. Um, hydrogen is an exception to this rule. So hydrogen um, will either want none or two electrons um, because it is such a small atom. Okay, so now we're going to get into um, how we can start to draw these Lewis structures. And we're going to start with just a Lewis symbol or a Lewis dot symbol is also um, what they're sometimes called. So a Lewis symbol um, is the chemical symbol for an element surrounded by one or more dots, each representing its valence electrons. Um, again, so this is not uh, talking about any sort of compounds. We're not talking about like H2O, CO2. This is only a singular atom, um, whether that be carbon, oxygen, nitrogen, hydrogen, whatever it is. Um, it's only a singular element um, to, for a Lewis dot symbol. So to draw a Lewis symbol, first we are going to indicate the element by its elemental symbol. And then we're going to draw one dot per valence electron. So it's important to note um, that when we are drawing Lewis dot symbols, we want to add one electron to each of the sides, each of the four sides of the elemental symbol before we start pairing them. Um, and this follows some rules that we learn a little bit later. Um, I think in chapter five, when we start talking about more of um, the intermolecular connections of atoms. So, Again, we just have to make sure that we put an electron on each side before we start pairing them. Um, and we're going to practice this a little bit. So we're going to draw the Lewis dot symbols for both hydrogen and bromine. So to start off, to draw the Lewis, uh, sim the Lewis dot symbol for hydrogen, we're going to look and we're going to find it on the periodic table. It's up here. Um, and we see that the elemental symbol is H. So you're going to draw the H. Um, and I apologize for my uh, computer handwriting. I don't really have a pen or anything, so it might be a little messy, but hopefully you get it. Um, and looking at the H, we can tell because it's in group one that it only has one valence electron. So you're just going to add one valence electron to the side. And that is your completed Lewis dot symbol for the hydrogen element or the hydrogen atom. Okay. Now we're going to look at bromine. So we're going to look up here and we're going to find bromine on the periodic table. We're going to see right here. Um, and we see that the elemental symbol again is just Br. So we're going to draw the Br. And we see that it's in group 7 and so it has 7 electrons. Um, and so we're going to start. We're going to go 1 electron, 2 electrons, three, four. Now that we have four electrons on it, we can start um, pairing them uh, now that we have one on each side. So we have four, this is five, six, and seven. And so that is your completed Lewis dot symbol for bromine. Okay, so the Lewis symbols um, tell us some cool things, I guess. Um, so they can indicate the bonding capacity of an atom. And when we get into drawing Lewis structures for more complicated compounds, um, it's really um, 
it's a good tool to understand bonding capacity. So the bonding capacity of an atom is the number of covalent bonds any atom um, can form to have an octet of electrons in its valence shell. It is also important to note that this is not always true. Like um, the number of unpaired um, valence electrons is not always the, um, the amount of covalent bonds that an, that an element or an atom will make. And so this right here is a good example is we have um, this noble gas which usually has eight um, valence electrons and so it would have no pairs but in this structure we can obviously see that um, it is in fact bonding to fluorine um, and so the the bonding capacity that we would be able to see from the Lewis uh, dot symbol is not necessarily the same as the actual amount of covalent bonds it can make. Um, and if we think back to the last slide about um, bromine, um, we can again remember that there was only one unbonded pair of, or one unbonded electron, so that means that in general, it will probably make one covalent bond to another atom. Um, and then hydrogen was the same way. And we can look and see for any other element. And in general, the bonding capacity um, or the number of unpaired electrons in the Lewis dot symbol will be uh, the amount of covalent bonds. But it is important to remember that there are exceptions to that rule. Okay, so now we're going to um, move forward, and we're not going to talk about Lewis symbols anymore, but we're going to talk about Lewis structures. So Lewis structures are a two-dimensional representation of the bonds and pairs, uh, the bonds and lone pairs of valence electrons in ionic or molecular compounds. So we're not only talking about uh, singular elements anymore, we're talking about um, multiple atoms covalently or ionically bonded to one another. So we have some examples up here. We can see that this one's um, H2O and this one's CH2O. Um, and some things to just kind of like get you started looking at this is um, we see that these are these dashed lines are where um, the atoms are bonded together and these dots up here represent lone pairs um, or just other electrons that are part of whichever atom they are connected to. So in both of these, the lone pairs are connected to the oxygen. Um, okay, so Lewis structures for ions are a little bit different than Lewis structures for other um, like covalent compounds. Uh, we know from, <clears throat> sorry, we know from previous sections that ionic compounds are formed when metal and nonmetal interacts and exchange electrons. So basically, um, the atoms are giving and taking electrons from one another. Um, in this reaction, we know that um, uh, the, each element wants to have a full octet to decrease its energy. Um, and so um, it's either going to give or take however many electrons it needs to um, have that octet. So let's take a look at sodium chloride. Um, when we look at the periodic table, we see that um, sodium, or Na, um, has one valence electron and chlorine has seven valence electrons. And so sodium is going to want to get rid of that electron and chlorine is going to want to take that electron. So when we're talking about the Lewis structures for ions, um, we see here that this electron moves over. Um, to the chlorine atom. And this is not actually the Lewis structure, but over here, this is representing the Lewis structure. Um, so you're going to, again, write the elemental symbols um, and then denote how many valence electrons each has on the side, uh, just like we would in a Lewis symbol. Um, it's also important to remember to um, mark your charges on each of the elements in an ionic compound. So in this one, sodium would have a plus one charge and chlorine would have a minus one charge. 
um, because sodium uh, gives up one of its atoms, so it has one more proton than it has, uh, or sorry, sodium gives up one of its electrons, so it has one more proton than electron, giving it a positive one charge. Um, and then chlorine takes that, so it has one, uh, one more electron than proton, so it'll have an overall negative one charge. Um, and you'll put brackets around any atom that has a full valence, um, that has the full valence electron. So it has the full octet. Um, technically, sodium would also have a full octet, but um, we're talking about the basis symbol of sodium. So uh, again, like the Lewis dot symbol would only have one valence electron and then it moves over to the chlorine. And so um, we don't have to denote any other electrons on that. Okay, so now we're going to talk a little bit about um, molecular compounds um, and specifically covalently bonded uh, molecular compounds. So uh, basically this is going to be anything except for your metals and your ions and elements. Um, so Lewis structures focus on these shared pairs or bonding pairs um, that are spread among a molecule. So this Lewis structure uh, that we defined previously, um, again, is going to be this two-dimensional uh, representation of how different atoms bond together um, or different elements bond together to make molecules. Um, and so the most basic thing we need to understand and know is a single bond. So a single bond is represented by a dash as shown two slides ago. Um, and uh, between, each, um, between each element in a molecular compound, um, there will be at least one dash representing a single bond. Um, there's also double and triple bonds uh, that are represented by multiple dashed lines, um, and there's also uh, lone pairs of electrons, um, as again, uh, we sh I showed a couple examples just a couple slides ago. Okay, so the steps to drawing a Lewis structure are first to determine the total number of valence electrons. Um, so, um, Again, just really simply look at the periodic table, um, figure out uh, how many valence electrons are in each element, and add all of them up within the compound. So then you're going to arrange the symbols um, to show how they're bonded, or in other words, you're going to create a skeletal structure, and you're going to start connecting them with single bonds, because each atom will be connected with at least a single bond. And you're going to complete octets of every atom bonded to the central atom by adding lone pairs. Um, and this is except for hydrogen, of course, because we talked about this before. Hydrogen will only ever have two valence electrons. Um, and then you're going to compare the number of valence electrons in the Lewis structure you drew with the number of valence electrons you counted in step one. Um, and then you're going to complete the octet of the central atom. So... Again, you want to make sure that the total number of valence electrons you have available is equal to the amount of uh, electrons you have in the end. Um, and there's a couple ways to do this. This is the step-by-step -step that you can actually read straight from the book. Um, sometimes I like to do it a little differently. Um, and sometimes, like, you, you'll figure it out to make... Um, to make it most easy for you to understand because um, there's multiple ways to do it and uh, Lewis structures, as you again learn later, aren't always set in how they are. Let's practice a little. So we're going to draw the Lewis structure of water or H2O. So we're going to start this by putting our oxygen in the center and our hydrogens on each side. Generally, a uh, Lewis structure um, is uh, symmetrical to each other, or is as symmetrical as we can. Okay, so this right here is our skeletal structure, adding a single bond between each. Now we need to note how many electrons we have in this element total, or in this compound total. So we know that hydrogen has one valence electron each, and oxygen has six 
So 2 plus 6 equals 8 total valence electrons. Hydrogen can only make one single bond. Um, and so we're going to take the rest of our electrons and we're going to add them onto our oxygen. We have one, two, three, four electrons already being used. So we're going to add one, two, three, four more onto that oxygen. Um, and that will complete our Lewis dot structure. Um, again, uh, there's different ways to do this and different ways to understand it, so we can go through that a little later. But as we move on, um, the Lewis structures get a little more complicated um, and have increasing bonds. So, um, like we said before, um, in water we have... Oh, this is kind of ugly, but... Um, so we have our H2O right here. And they it has single bonds. So that's just represented by one dash line. So a single bond is a bond that results when two atoms share one pair of electrons. And so that dash represents two valence electrons. We also have double bonds, which will then be represented with a double dash line just like that. Um, and that is where uh, two atoms share two pairs of electrons. So a double bond will have a total of four electrons in it. And then there's triple bonds. And like you could probably already tell, a triple bond um, is a bond that results when two atoms share three pairs of electrons. So an example of this is N2. So we have our two nitrogens. Um, and each of those have five valence electrons. Um, and so and they have a triple bond between them. So its Lewis structure will look like that, and it has this three dash line representing a triple bond within it. Okay, so let's practice a little more. We're gonna draw the Lewis structure of CH2O. So let's start by figuring out how many total valence electrons we have. So carbon is going to have four valence electrons, hydrogen each has one, and oxygen has six. So if we add those all up, it'll result in a total of 12 valence electrons. We're just gonna read this from left to right, and we're gonna start with our carbon. And on our carbon, we're gonna add those two hydrogens and then also that oxygen, like that. We're gonna bond all of these just with single bonds to start off. Um, so this is our skeletal structure. We know hydrogen because it can only have a total of two valence electrons and it has one, two now right here and one, two right here. We can't add anything else onto the hydrogen. Carbon on the other hand, we know has one extra valence electron. So I'm gonna draw that right there and oxygen or sorry, carbon has four valence electrons total, and so it has one, two, three being bonded, so it has one extra is what I mean by that. And oxygen starts out with six valence electrons. One of them is bonded right here, so we're gonna have one, two, three, four, five. And so um, we can see that neither carbon or oxygen quite has a full octet, but we do see, look, this electron right here isn't bonded to anything, and this electron right there isn't bonded to anything. So we, with those two electrons, can create a double bond between the carbon and oxygen and get rid of those right there. And that right there will be your completed Lewis structure for CH2O. And we're just going to double check. So we said it had 12 valence electrons total. And we can count these. So each of these bonds is going to be two. So two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve electrons. So that is completed and it looks good. Okay, so let's start with a little more, or let's do a little more complicated of a Lewis structure. We're going to do the Lewis structure of acetic acid. Um, so looking at that, we're going to conclude that there are 24 valence electrons total in this. And that is because there are four for each carbon one for each hydrogen, and six for each oxygen. So we're gonna start out, we're just gonna read this left to right. So we're gonna start with our carbon, and we're gonna connect that to our three hydrogens that are right next to it. And we're just gonna connect those with single bonds to start our skeletal structure off. 
And all of those hydrogens now don't, they can't have any other bonds or um, lone pairs connected to them because their octets are full. And next we see that we have another carbon. So we're going to single bond that to another carbon. And now that first carbon's um, octet is full because it has four uh, single bonds. So, and each of those are two electrons. So it has a total of eight electrons around it. Okay. Then we're going to take our carbon and we see that there's two oxygens. So we're going to add on the two oxygens, again, just single bonded to complete our skeletal structure at first. And then that there's one hydrogen. So we're just going to pick uh, one of these oxygens and we're going to add a hydrogen onto it. So we can see from this that there's 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14 of our valence electrons used up. Um, and so we still have 10 electrons. We see that this carbon only has three single bonds on it um, so that its octet is not complete yet. It'll have one more valence electron I'm gonna note right there. This oxygen started out with six valence electrons, only one of them is being used in that bond. So it's going to have one, two, three, four, five more. This oxygen has two valence electrons being used, so it has four more, one, two, three, four, and that should account for our total 24 electrons. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. So that is our total um, valence electrons, but we're not done yet because both carbon and this oxygen right there do not have a complete octet. But what we can tell is that each of them have an unpaired valence electron. So we can take those electrons and we can combine them to create a double bond right here between this carbon and oxygen. So we're going to get rid of those because those are now shown within this double bond. And this is our completed Lewis structure for acetic acid. Okay, so hopefully that showed you good enough how to draw Lewis structures. It just takes time and practice to really get used to it, um, but you can just follow the step by the step in the book, also noted on this PowerPoint. Okay, so now we're going to talk a little bit about bond order. So bond order is the number of bonds between two atoms. So bond order is one for a single bond, two for a double bond, and three for a triple bond. This gets more complicated in the future when we talk about resonance structures. Um, and different things like that. So if we're looking at this um, C3H3N um, molecule, we can see right here that this is a triple bond. So it's going to have a bond order of three. This right here is a single bond, so it's going to have a bond order of one. And this right here is a double bond, so it's going to have a bond order of two. And that's pretty simple. That's pretty much all there is used to, or all there is to it for now. Um, so the bond length and strengths between atoms are based off of two different things, that being the bond order and the size of the atoms. Um, so when bond energies and lengths are given also, they are given as average values um, because they're not always set. Um, but because molecules all act differently. Um, so we're going to talk a little bit about bond length. So as depicted in this image right here, you can see that a single bond is pretty long and then a double bond gets smaller and a triple bond gets even smaller. So the bond length is the distance between two atoms bonded to one another and this higher bond order is going to give us a shorter bond length. And that's because the density of electrons increases between the two atoms' nuclei. And this results in a stronger attraction of the nuclei to the electrons, creating a shorter distance between those two nuclei. And generally, um, we can also see that smaller atoms, just because simply they're smaller and they have less electrons on them, will have shorter um, bond length. Bond strengths, on the other hand, are how strong a bond is between two atoms. Higher bond order also gives us stronger bonds. Um, this is because the more electrons paired, the more energy it takes to break them apart. Um, 
and get rid of those bonds. So bond energy is the energy required to break apart one mole of a covalent bond in the gas phase. And we also can see that generally smaller atoms will give you stronger bonds because they're closer together, they have a little bit more attraction, um, and yeah. All right, well, that's the end of the review. Hopefully um, that helps. And um, again, if there's like any questions, the book is really, really helpful when figuring out how to draw Lewis structures. It has a lot of great examples. So thank you.